Hello everybody and welcome to so I'll show you how to hash passwords and store them safely in your database using Bcrypt with Python in your Flask API. I'll be using uh, Postman to send requests. I'll be using the DB browser to just check on the SQL like database that we'll be using for storage. There's only one table in it with these three fields. And I already have some basic setup here uh, with two basic routes for login and register, some SQL alchemy setup, and only one model for a user that has ID, email, and hash. And that's about it. If you need a tutorial on that, I might do one, but it's it's quite simple stuff. You'll have all the code in the link in the description below. So first of all, what we need to do is install Bcrypt. In order to do that, obviously, we need to get the Bcrypt package from PyPy. Uh, so pip install bcrypt the next thing we need to do is import bcrypt so import bcrypt uh, let's clear this and we can start our flask application with flask dash and flask run okay so we have bcrypt installed and imported into our application the next thing we need to do is create the logic for our register route which we'll do first and then we'll do the login one in the register route, what we want to do is uh, get the password and the email from the request body. Since in the actual database, we have the email and the hash. So when our user registers, they send the email and the password uh, for their account. So let's get the email. The email is going to be from the request, which we'll input from Flask up there. JSON, get, and then in here, uh, we'll get the email. And if there is no email, we'll just get the value of none and then the same will be done for the password the only difference is is we're getting the password i will add a few checks here so if uh there is no email we'll return uh, a missing email uh, with the status of 400 and we'll do the same for the password obviously with the only difference being missing uh password Okay, so if the user does, or whoever sends the request, sends the email and the password, what we want to do now is hash this password that the user sent and use it to and store it in the database. So for that, I'll just copy some code from their official docs. You'll have this link in the description. So let me just copy this and I'll explain it. So here we define a hashed variable, which will contain the hashed for, uh, password. We call bcrypt a hash password. The first parameter this function takes is the password we want to hash and the second is the bcrypt gen salt function uh, this function can take in a number uh, of rounds so the the more the, the higher the number the, the more times it hashes it so it's safer technically uh, for this we'll just use the default number which is 12. Uh, the only thing here is that we can't just hash the passwords in its uh, current state we need to encode it in utf8 uh, format so encode um, UTF-8. So after this, we'll have a hash password and an email. What you want to do now is add these to the database. So what we want to do here is the following. DB. Well, no, first we want to define the user. So we want to say user equals user. The email will be equal to the email. And then the hash, which is, as you might remember, the other field we have in our database will be equal to the hashed password. So here we defined a new user. Now we want to add it to the database. So we say db.session.add, and then we add the user. Afterwards, we want to commit these changes to the database. So db.session, um, commit, and then that saves the changes to the database. Uh, what we want to do is say now after the registration is complete and if it's successful, we want to say welcome um, and then we'll put the email of the user that registered. This needs to be an F string. Okay, so that should be it. Everything should work now. Uh, let's see if it does. So if we go here, we make a request to slash register. Let's get a raw JSON body. Let's send in an email of um, test at test.com and a password of test. Let's send this. Welcome test at test.com. Let's see if that added it to the database. Yes, it did. 
test test.com and then the hash of the password okay so the registration does work uh, now we could add some we, we could check if we don't add an email what happens right so if we do if we don't add a password for example if we send this missing password if we send just the password or email missing email so our uh, handling of those situations works um you could obviously add more error handling here which we but which i might do uh later on okay so since the register route is done we can now move on to the login route it will be quite similar so the beginning this part uh, is actually going to be the same so we can just copy this code and go from there so we'll get the email we'll get the password we'll check if there's an email in the password we'll also return so the difference starts here uh first what we need to do is actually query the database and uh, get the user so user equals user dot query dot filter underscore by email or email equals email and then get the, the first one now this is SQL Alchemy you can obviously check this out google it but basically what this does is selects uh, the first user in the database we have where the email equals the email provided here so what we want to do now is check if the user exists so if there is no user uh, return we want to return uh, user not found since uh, we could not find this user so even though they provided an email and a password this user is not registered so they can't log in so user not found uh, let's return a 404 but if there is a user what we want to do here is do a check so for that, we can use a different beaker function called check password. I'll just copy this part because I don't like to type, but yeah. So I'll, I'll clear this. So if bcrypt.check password, which takes into parameters the password uh, that we sent, and then the hashed version of the password uh, from the database. Uh, we do have that now in the user uh, dictionary. So user hash will contain the hashed password from here because we have this entire row so we have the email the id and the hash so it will check if the password equals to the user hash if it does it will return true if it does not it will return false so if it is true if this is correct if the password is we'll say um we'll return welcome and then welcome back and then we'll put the um email right here it's going to be an F string again. Oh, whoops. Uh, can I? Okay. And then else, if it this isn't correct, we want to return um, uh, wrong password. And then we can remove this return login. So uh, the login route is is quite simple. So if it finds the if it does not find the user with that email user just is doesn't exist if it finds the user it checks if the passwords are the same if they are it says welcome back if no the it says wrong password okay let's save that and test it out so currently we have this one user test at uh test.com with the password of test we'll send a request to slash login with this info uh there's an uh okay yeah what i forgot to do was encode the password again because the bcrypt uh, functions take in only encoded uh, strings so now it should work just fine welcome back test at test.com if we type in a password that's like test one so not correct wrong password if we change the email to test two user not found if we let's say not we don't provide a password missing password and if we don't provide an email it will say the missing email. So all of the checks do work as they should. Um, and that's really it. Uh, you could obviously add more error handling. You could add a lot more things here. You can make this a lot more complex and you should. You would obviously, instead of just returning welcome back, you'll return a JSON web token or something or a cookie. And I actually might do a tutorial on that later. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something new. You can check all this code in the description, including the database. And uh, goodbye.
Hello everyone and welcome, uh, this is just like a bonus part at, at the end of the video to show you how to do a bit of error handling uh, with these routes. Uh, you don't really need this, it will already be included in the code, but you can follow along if you really want to. So currently all of this works and we have, uh, we do handle uh, situations where they don't provide an email or a password if the user already exists, but what happens for example if, let's say we send a request to log in, but instead of sending it as JSON, we send it as text, right? Uh, we get this error attribute error non-type object has no attribute get blah 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 so there's an issue and if someone that's sending us real gets this uh, giant just wall of text you're not gonna know what to do so what we want to do is put all of this code in a try accept block and then handle this uh, properly so try and then put all of this in the try block and then Except, so if there is an attribute error, all you want to return is please provide e uh, an email and password in JSON format. Uh, that's JSON in the request body, and boom, we solve that issue. That's done. So, oh, that's for the register route though. But, um, same thing applies. Uh, yeah, so it works. Another thing is, what if a user registers, tries to register, but they already have an account, so we get this SQL Alchemy uh, error. So, in order to solve that, uh, well, first of all, for this specific error, we need to import the error uh, type because it's it's not already included. So from SQL alchemy .exc, we wanna no, we wanna say from this import uh, integrity error because that's not a default error in Python. And then what we wanna do here is say accept um, integrity error. So if there is an integrity error. Uh, let me just return a 400 right here as well. And then what I want to do here is say if this error does happen, um, a user with that email is already listed. And I think we're good. So if now someone sends a request again to register with the same email and password, or the same email that already is registered, they'll get a user with that email is already registered. So now, uh, uh, also, if that happens to the login page, I mean, uh, if we send text to the login page, we need to add this same exception. So let's put the login route in a try accept block. Now, if this happens to here, it also does what it's supposed to do. And uh, that's it, really. Um, thank you for watching. That's just a bonus part with uh, some hair and Hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you learned something. Bye-bye.